Today on episode one, we're going to be looking at the First Amendment, the founders' reasoning behind it, how it's aged through time, and much more. I'm your host, The Savage Conservative, and this is the Red Wave Podcast. All right, I'm really looking forward to today's topic, but first, let me take a minute to tell you about my friends over at CrusaderOutlet.com. Guys, I don't know about you, but I really love wearing some patriotic, conservative apparel around town, something I do quite often, really. CrusaderOutlet.com has you covered there with awesome shirts, shorts, hats, etc. Plus, you can use my affiliate link, CrusaderOutlet.com slash discount slash wave, or simply use discount code wave at the checkout to get 10% off your order. Again, that's CrusaderOutlet.com, discount code wave. Go check it out. Alrighty, hello and welcome to the first official episode of the Red Wave Podcast. I can't wait to dive into the effects that the First Amendment has had on our nation throughout the last 229 years and counting. But before we do that, I thought it would be a good idea to go over the actual First Amendment itself before we go any further to see if there's anything there that we hadn't noticed before. The amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Right off the bat, I'm noticing something that's never really stood out to me before, and that is that the amendment technically only applies to, quote, Congress, and in no way brings state governments into play. This would mean that the individual state governments are not bound by the First Amendment and would be able to crack down on their citizens' freedoms. As surprising as it may seem, as Floyd Abrams, a renowned First Amendment lawyer and scholar, points out, this view has been held throughout the majority of American history, with the First Amendment only beginning to apply to state governments in the early 1900s. And that's just something I never really would have picked up on had I not decided to go through the actual First Amendment a few times, read it through, and see if I can pick it apart and see if there's anything there, like I said, that I really haven't seen before that hasn't really stood out to me before. As we read on in the First Amendment, we see something that is a little bit more obvious. We see that five freedoms are spelled out for us, namely religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition, all of which are very central, very important to American society as we have come to know it. And I'm very grateful for these five specifically being spelled out in something that is so important and so central as the First Amendment. And as time has passed in American history, we've seen that the First Amendment has been so essential in maintaining our basic freedom. For example, here's what Frederick Douglass said, of course, the great Civil War icon. He said, Liberty is meaningless where the right to utter one's thoughts and opinions has ceased to exist. That of all rights is the dread of tyrants. It is the right which they first of all strike down. They know its power, thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, founded in injustice and wrong, are sure to tremble if men are allowed to reason of righteousness, temperance, and of a judgment to come in their presence. This is what freedom of speech is all about. This is really what the First Amendment, to a certain extent, is all about. Of course, there are other liberties mentioned, but freedom of speech is at its core, and it really, the spirit of it hits at all, all four of the other liberties mentioned in the First Amendment. A citizenry must have the freedom to criticize its government, to communicate freely ideas amongst one another, and the second those liberties are taken away, you are on the road to tyranny. And no one understood this better than George Washington, who said, while he was talking about the possibility of, you know, the freedom of speech of a population being taken away, he said, the freedom of speech may be taken away, and dumb and silent we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. Words to remember, indeed. And certainly a principle to take away, especially during this coronavirus pandemic that's going on right now, a quarantine, or you, a better way to put it, maybe a house arrest across the nation 
And while this is going on, it's so important to remember that old Benjamin Franklin quote that says, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Does that mean that we shouldn't follow what the government is saying as far as, 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 far as quarantine and, and isolation goes? That's not what I'm saying. doesn't mean I think the quarantine is necessarily a good thing or worth it. That's not really the point I'm trying to get at here. We have to always be on guard to make sure that our rights are secure. You can't start trusting the government too much because they are not trustworthy. Any government throughout really the history of time has proven to be untrustworthy. And the current United States government is certainly no different. And now I would like to move on to talk about the First Amendment in today's world. Perhaps more specifically, we could talk about free speech. Free speech is in somewhat of an odd place right now. I'm right here. I'm talking to you on a podcast that I started in. It took me two weeks to start this podcast. That's a very low barrier to entry for anyone that wants to get online and spread their opinions. However, people like me are also at the mercy of the companies through which we are publishing. Give an example. YouTube has highly censored Steven Crowder. Maybe not censored, but definitely demonetized. That hurts him in a massive way. They're targeting him for saying that he promotes, quote, hate speech, that nonsense. Sure, YouTube, Google isn't the government, but it poses, they pose another threat to our freedom of speech and ability to share our opinions. And some people may not buy into the legitimacy of this concern, but I really believe that it is perhaps the greatest threat uh, that is posed against our freedom of speech. And like I said, that's the only outlet, that's the only way to share our concerns, to share our opinions peacefully is through the First Amendment. All of us want peace. We do not want another revolution. We don't want anything like that. We want peaceful conversation. That's what the First Amendment is there for. And that's something else that people get confused with. Okay? They take something like hate speech. Hate speech, whatever you define it as, somebody being hateful with their speech is not a good thing. It's not something that we want in our society. However, the First Amendment does protect it. The First Amendment is not there for hate speech and for the purpose of protecting hate speech, but it does protect it for the sake of protecting legitimate political discussion and legitimate political discourse. Because who decides what is legitimate, quote, free speech and not, quote, hate speech in that scenario? That's the government. And why would we want to trust the government with that responsibility? It's better off to just allow both civil discourse and, quote, hate speech. Because the government can deem whatever they like hate speech, just like YouTube is doing with Steven Crowder. So certainly the effort to preserve our beloved First Amendment goes on. But it's great to know that at least right now, we have some pretty decent platforms for free speech, free thinkers, and are able to communicate openly about what we think and for that i am very very grateful all right and that pretty much wraps up the show make sure if you enjoyed the podcast to go ahead and leave it a rating and a review that really helps the podcast grow and i wanted to let you guys know that due to medical reasons i will not be able to put out a podcast next week so it will be two weeks from today may 20th when the second episode of the red wave podcast will be released And in the spirit of freedom of speech and taking principled stands, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Socrates 
the great philosopher, when faced with death, they told him he could live if he would simply stop practicing philosophy. Here's what he said. Gentlemen, I am your very grateful and devoted servant, but I owe a greater obedience to God than to you, and so long as I draw breath and have my faculties, I shall never stop practicing philosophy and exhorting you and elucidating the truth for everyone that I meet. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. I can't wait to see you in a couple weeks for our second episode.